You got the Big 12 title game in Jerry World. It's Texas. It's Oklahoma State to break it all down from the Longhorn side of things from inside Texas. Best in the business covering everything going on in the 40 acres. Bobby Burton. Bobby, you and I spoke before the season started and there was this big talking point around if Texas doesn't win the Big 12 their last year in the conference. Is it a success? Is it a failure if they lose it? And now we're sitting here 11 and 1 double digit favorites to win the Big 12 in, in this last game for them. How do you feel about that that thought overall around a failure versus success based on this game? Oh, I, I, I think it's been a successful season regardless. I mean, Texas is 11 and 1. Um, Steve Sarkeesian, when he took over his first year at Texas, he had five. He went five and seven. Last year, he went eight and five. It's another at least three game win performance this year. They're 11 and one. Uh, he clearly has the program going in the direction uh, that he wants it to go in. Uh, for folks that didn't get a chance to see uh, Friday night's game against Texas Tech, Texas literally just put it on the Red Raiders. Uh, and the whole fourth quarter was played by Arch Manning, who, frankly, Quinn Ewers is going to come back next year is what it looks like. Uh, and to have Arch Manning waiting in the wings, uh, the Texas program is in really good shape. And that's more than anything what Texas fans want. Uh, J.D., you know this. It's not about a single year for University of Texas football. They want a program that can win year after year after year and sustain success. They want to be Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, and what Michigan has turned into recently. That's their goal, not, J.D., this one-hit wonder. They don't want to be TCU from last year. And the other knock people would have on Texas before Steve Sarkeesian got there, where people would talk a lot about, well, you know, development. Do you guys go to Texas and get developed and get drafted as high as they should? Like, I feel like we're sitting here with Xavier Worthy, Jatavian Sanders, if he chooses to go, Adonai Mitch, like all these guys that have gone to Texas and are now going to be in a really good spot to make a lot of money here pretty soon, Bobby. Well, Tavondre Sweat uh, was named Defensive Player of the Year in the Big 12 on, on uh, Wednesday. And J.D., he was a three-star recruit. So they've done a lot of Byron Murphy, low four star. He was named defensive lineman of the year in the Big 12. Jalen Ford uh, was a former Utah commitment that nobody else in the Big 12, Oklahoma didn't really mess with, AM didn't mess with. He's a first team all conference selection. Uh, Steve Sarkeesian and his group have done not only a great job of adding to the roster uh, through the transfer portal and especially through recruiting, but also developing what they have in the first place. And for yeah, I feel me, like that's kind of a, a mic drop moment there. Hey, our three-star yeah. is now the defensive player of the year in the Big 12. Enough said. Uh, going back to this game, Bobby, going to play Oklahoma State in Jerry World. The big talking point all week long for the folks in Stillwater is going to be Ollie Gordon. What, is, what does Texas have to do to slow him down in this game? Uh, they got to be, they gotta be uh, disciplined in their uh, run la uh, rush lanes. And what I mean by that is he is a big cutback runner. Um, loves cutting back against the grain and is terrific at it. I mean, look, I don't know what Mike Gundy was doing the first three games of the year when he only gave him the ball like 19 times for 107 yards. But since conference play, he's rushed for 1,471 yards, uh, 20 touchdowns overall for the season, uh, running the ball. He's just a fantastic player. I think much like what Texas did against Taj Brooks, Taj Brooks, uh, the Texas Tech running back went 19 for 95, yard, 95 yards on Friday. I think that that's what they're going to try to do against Ollie Gordon. They just don't want him to break the big one, right? They, that is their big play specialist. It's not, the, it's not the receivers. It's not the quarterback. Their running back is their big play guy, and that's what Texas has to limit. Yeah, it feels like if you can at least manage that part of the game, then you help yourself from having those big pass plays going over your head because you're worried about Ollie Gordon. I'm 100% in lockstep there. Now, if they win this game, we're going to hit Selection Sunday, and Texas will be sitting there as a one-loss conference champ. Bobby, how do you think Texas fans should feel should they win in Jerry World? Uh, you know, it all depends on what the ACC championship game does. I mean, I, I really believe that. I think Texas is in if they win and Florida State loses. Uh, because Florida State, with their backup quarterback, at the, even if they're 12-1, and one, are, are not going to be able to – and not win the conference championship are not going to beat uh, out a 12-1 uh, and one Texas team with a conference championship. Uh, other than that, I don't see anything standing in the way of Texas playing in the, in the college football playoff. And the other scenario I think that gets thrown out there a lot right now is, well, what if, you know, Oregon beats Washington and then Bama beats Georgia and we got three loss – conference champions and then you got two undefeated that are already sitting there 
I don't want to, you know, ask you to make a definitive statement, but how, how would you feel if you got those three all sitting in one bunch where Texas has a head to head over Bama? And you would have to think, you know, finishing the year the way that Texas could finish the year next to Oregon, like, I, I don't know how that would shake out. How would you feel overall if Texas is in that spot? Well, if Texas doesn't go over Alabama, I don't know what to say. I mean, they play, <laughs> yep. you know, and I think the, 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 uh, the seven or eight teams are in the uh, that are in the top seven right now are something incredible like 35 and one this season at home. Well, that one is Texas beating Alabama at its home by 10 points. Yep. Well, in in the, the, the college football playoff committee is supposed to go by conference champions, uh, head to head, and then common opponents. Texas has not only a conference championship, but a head to head against Alabama. Now, and, Georgia yeah. wins, different story, obviously. Yeah, I mean, but you, you said it, Bobby, about common opponents. Uh, Oregon and Texas also share a common opponent. One was a 50-point win over Texas Tech for Texas, and then Oregon kind of went back and forth with Texas Tech for a while there. So it was early in the year. I believe that was somewhere, I think it was week three, maybe, somewhere in that range. It was very, very early in the year. Week two, that's right. And, uh, you know, the game was 38-30, to 30, but uh, – Texas Tech missed a two-point conversion with one minute left to go in the game that would have put them ahead. And then they got the ball back somehow and went down and threw a pick six uh, to close out the game on the 50-yard line or from the 50-yard line or so. So uh, it was definitely different. But at the same time, look, I, I don't have a problem if Oregon is going ahead of Texas, if the guy, Boo, uh, whatever his name is, that does the college football playoff, if he's going to sit there and quote Bo Nix's completion stats as a reason for that though that's kind of absurd and indicative in my opinion of a college football playoff committee that is out of touch and you know not representative of uh college football yeah boot boot corrigan and his committee i know they've, they've probably taken their uh their fair amount of flack and i don't think that's going to slow down anytime soon and uh to be fair what a what a difficult year to try and decide it to. I mean, I'm as high as on Oregon as anybody else, but to have Texas sitting there with the win over Bama, I don't, I don't know how you would leave them out if the cards were to, were to fall that way. Uh, well, Bobby, I appreciate you making time. I know we'll get into this obviously after selection Sunday and talk about how the cards fell. But regardless, appreciate you coming on and uh, enjoy the game this weekend. All right, Jay, you have a good one, buddy. Texas Longhorn fans, if you like that video, make sure you get a membership over at Inside Texas. Going to keep you in the know for all things regarding your Texas Longhorns, what's going on on the 40 acres. Get a membership there and subscribe right here to the On3Roundtable YouTube channel.